I immediately ran over shouting, You spit that taco out right now! Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to round five of my 100 scene studies challenge. Today's theme is animals. I am a huge animal lover, so it was only a matter of time before we got to this theme. I'll also be sharing with you some of my favorite and funniest animal stories, so make sure to subscribe if you're not already, and let's get into the video. Now I've always loved animals, but I had an encounter with a reptile when I was little that left me a little bit traumatized. One day when I was about three years old, my parents took me and my sister outside to see a critter that my grandpa had brought over. And this critter had a pretty scary name, Snapping Turtle. I was warned that these little guys could bite, so I kept my distance. Until I didn't. I leaned over the container just a little bit too far, lost my balance, and fell into the belly of the beast. In my little three-year-old heart, I knew that I was a goner. I had myself pretty convinced that this two-inch turtle was going to devour me alive. That is, until my dad pulled me back out of the container crying. <laughs> The turtle never even touched me, but it still haunts me to this day. I've had a lot of pets over the years. Most of them, unfortunately, have crossed the Rainbow Bridge now, but they were all very, very well loved. We've pretty much always had at least one pet in the house ever since my sister and I were little. Now most of these were not store-bought pets. No, no, we needed something sturdy, something from the wild because I got very emotionally attached. So what do you do when you want a pet? You go and catch it. Anytime I wanted to fill up our fish tank, my dad would take me down to the creek and we'd catch minnows, turtles, crawdads, you name it. These little suckers lived for years. Now the crawdads were some of our more unusual and shall we say complicated pets. Very fun to look at, but very much a hassle to keep. Not because they pinched or were hard to feed, <laughs> no, they were hard to keep in the tank. One day, as I was trying to look at my shiny new pet crawdads, I realized one was missing. Now we searched for an entire morning looking for this thing. We can't just have a crawdad crawling around the basement. For one, they need water, and for two, we have a very, very wimpy dog. We finally catch it, throw it back in the tank, and stick a container on top of it. The tank had a lid, but the lids had a few crawdad-sized holes in it, so we figured that a container would block those secret passageways. We figured wrong. This saga of escape and recapture continued for weeks, until finally one of them just disappeared entirely. At that point, my dad walked me back down to the creek and made me let the other one go. And I cried as he slid down the hill into the stream, but it was the right thing to do. We did eventually find the other one, two years later. Ever found a crawdad skeleton in a closet? I did. Let me tell you, that's the stuff of nightmares right there. After that whole series of unfortunate events, I was in search of a more, shall we say, stationary pet. Enter in the hermit crabs. These were some of the few store-bought critters I had. Our crabby story begins with Duncan and Pumpernickel. Duncan as in the donuts, and Pumpernickel as in the bread. Now these guys were very little and very cute when I got them. They let me hold them pretty frequently and never once pinched me, and I appreciated that. However, did you know that hermit crabs are nocturnal? I didn't. I cannot even begin to tell you how many times I was woken up in the middle of the night by two little hermit crabs jumping off of the roofs of their little huts and landing shell first into the glass walls of the tank. That's not a great way to be woken up in the middle of the night, especially when you're a jumpy 11 year old who's afraid of the dark. They also are very vocal. They chirp, which is admittedly very cute, but not so cute when it's 12.15 at night. Now I knew within a few months that something was wrong with Duncan as Pumpernickel grew in stature and Duncan did not. Unfortunately, Pumpernickel took advantage of this and mercilessly picked on Duncan. He would chase him around the tank, jump on his shell. He was a bully. And one day, Duncan was no more. Now because Duncan had been a sickly little fella, I assumed it was just his time to go. 
My family, however, was convinced that I was harboring a murderer whose name started with a P and ended with an umbernickel. We made another trip to PetSmart to pick out another hermit crab. They're more social creatures, so I really didn't want Pumpernickel to be left alone in his time of grief. Enter in Captain Butterfinger. If you're surprised that these have all been food-related names, you really shouldn't be. Anyways, Butterfinger was already about the same size as Pumpernickel, so I hoped there wouldn't be any bullying. And there wasn't. Because within a few months, there was no longer a Butterfinger. Now he was perfectly healthy, and one day he just died. At this point, I began to join my family in their suspicions that Pumpernickel was a felon. There was no return trip to the pet store, and Pumpernickel remained alone for the rest of his years. He had a good long life, unlike his brethren who met such an untimely end. Now I couldn't share animal stories without sharing my most beloved pet. Gracing the thumbnail photo of this video is my little Ella Mae. She's been with me since I was about five, and let me tell you, I love that thing to pieces. She's mostly blind now and definitely has some hearing loss. Or maybe it's just selective hearing because she always knows when I open up her tree can. She's a bit of a klutz and she's not the brightest in the bunch, but she's definitely my favorite. That being said, she's Henri and she knows it. She's a massive drama queen and pitches fits if she doesn't get the attention that she wants when she wants it. Her favorite attention tactic has always been knocking over trash cans and tearing up Kleenex. However, Kleenex are not the only thing she's found in her dumpster diving adventures. One day I was in the basement, apparently ignoring her, and I heard the all too familiar sound of the kitchen trash can hitting the floor. I got upstairs just in time to see a very fluffy butt waddling into her kennel with a taco shell hanging out of her mouth. I immediately ran over shouting, you spit that taco out right now! Now this dog does not have many teeth anymore. She still has her front one on the bottom, but only one or two of her front teeth on the top. But that one tooth is solid. Ella has the jaw strength of a freaking crocodile and that taco shell did not budge no matter how hard I pulled. So we both just sat there, staring at each other. She biting one side of the taco as drool dripped out of her mouth, and I holding the other, wondering how I got to this point in life. She did eventually spit it out, but her commitment to food is unmatched. We've had a couple of mice in the basement over the years, so traps aren't an uncommon item. You gotta lure the mice with something, so my dad would put some peanut butter on the traps. Now Ella is always hungry. I promise we do feed her, but she is still a little piggy and will eat literally anything. This idiot licked the peanut butter off of the mouse traps, miraculously avoiding setting the traps off and losing her tongue. <laughs> what a ding dong. For loving attention, she hates receiving it from other animals. We used to take her to our local 4th of July parade, but she could not stand being around the other pets. She did, however, win the pet show at the 4th of July event two years in a row. Not that I'm proud or anything. We had a pretty killer jumping through a hula hoop routine. Did she crawl around the hoop on the first try to get the treat? Maybe. Did we have a little sidebar of me going, Dude, we talked about this. Stick with the program. Maybe. But in the end, she did the trick and the crowd went wild. But anyways, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, she doesn't like other animals. The only animal that she does like is horses. And I found this out about a year ago when my dad and I took her for one of our summer walks. There was a couple out riding horses and let me tell you, the only thing that has lit up her eyes more than food were those two horses. She threw her little head up in the air and puffed her little chest out and walked just as proud as she could as we passed the horses and she kept looking back like every two seconds until she couldn't see them anymore. And she was happy for the rest of the day. She's such a wingnut, but I love her to pieces. There's no one I'd rather share my sweet potatoes with. So that's it for today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed these scene studies and listening to my animal stories. Shout out to the Scoop Troop over on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for helping to support my art education and my YouTube channel. If you're interested in partnering with me and helping to keep this channel going, please consider joining us on Patreon for as low as a dollar a month. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye guys!